What's going on everyone? It's your boy here welcoming you to yet another issue of Tommy Reed's X-Men. Today we're going to be tackling X-Men number 5 from May 1964. Written by the great Stan Lee with artwork by Jack the King Kirby. This one's titled Trapped, One X-Men. If you'll remember, we picked up last issue off a of cliffhanger. Uh, last issue was the first cliffhanger we've had in the X-Men series, and we're picking up with the X-Men coming home to the mansion, and they have Charles, who is injured. Um, for some weird reason, the X-Men don't have a key to the mansion, so I guess they didn't thought it'd be bad manners to reach through Papa Chuck's pockets or something like that, but uh, Charles is hurt, so Beast is basically holding him, and everyone else is fumbling, looking for a key, and then Cyclops decides to zzzz, he, uh, that's what the optic blast sounded like to me, zzzz. And uh, he uh, optic blasts the lock and the X-Men get in, just in time to realize that Jean had forgot to tell everyone that her parents were coming to visit that day. This is almost a sitcom-y kind of hijinks that's going to happen right here, but the X-Men basically take Charles and kind of toss him into a corner or a closet or something. I mean, there's enough rooms in the mansion that he probably has this uh, whole wing but they just kind of toss him off to the side and then get out of their costumes and get into their teenage clothes, is what they call them. Change into your teenage clothes. Which, for 1964, apparently was suits, ties, fancy dresses. Now, I'm rocking a Star Wars shirt here. First non-black shirt I think I've worn for these reviews anyway. But, uh, yeah, the um, t-shirt, jeans, that's what I'm comfortable in. That's, you know, pretty much been the uniform since elementary school but yeah the x-men teenage clothes is a tie vest blazer you know like they're going to a really fancy prep school while they're giving the grays a tour who are on their way to visit uh Jean when they're going to the 1964 world's fair which i guess is an ad for the world's fair i don't know i've never been to one do they even have world's fairs anymore i don't know but uh while giving them the tour they bypass the danger room for obvious reasons, but Scott somehow gets trapped in the danger room while trying to close the door to it and uh, gets set up on a test of beast training. So Cyclops is fighting for his life uh, in a training simulator that's not meant for him, so all the things are uh, really dangerous for him. Uh, but he holds his own. He holds his own. He does a good job. And he finally frees himself. Like, where the heck was everyone? But they were busy schmoozing with the greys. So, uh, he's pretty mad. So he goes to his room and sulks while the other members of the team decide to check out a track meet that's on TV. Now, again, I keep reiterating I wasn't around in the 60s, but uh, were track meets a big deal back then? Because I don't know if they're televised here. Or if so, they're not very advertised, right? Uh, when's the last time you sat down with the whole family to watch a good old track meet? Um, yeah, can't remember when. But... The track meet ends up being a plot from the Brotherhood, for some reason, led by Toad. And let me just break down Toad's grand plan to trap the X-Men. He's going to compete in a track meet, win it, and then get exposed as a mutant. Now, he's, all, he's doing this under the predilection that the X-Men are watching the track meet. If they're not watching, this whole plan is just him trying to win a gold medal for something. So he gets exposed as a mutant... And again, this is all part of the plan. He gets exposed as a mutant, and he waits for the crowd to turn on him and still hopes the cameras are running so the X-Men will see this and then run to his rescue. And then, once they do all these things that have fallen into place, then attack the X-Men with the Brotherhood. Now, if I'm Magneto, <laughs> and I'm not, but if I'm Magneto... Why would I allow Tout to go with this plan? Number one, it's a track meet, so why wouldn't we have Quicksilver do this, who's fast? Now, this could be like an Incredibles dash runs too fast kind of thing where Quicksilver couldn't slow down enough, and it would be obvious, but the whole plan was to expose him as a mutant. I mean, also, while this is all happening, Toad is wearing a rubber mask so people don't know it's him. Now, besides the X-Men, who they hope are watching, and would come anyway if Toad's there in the track meet to stop him from doing whatever maniacal thing they no doubt think he's doing. <laughs> Why would anyone care that this guy's in a rubber mask? I mean, they don't know him. Like, he could be part of the team on the college for all they know. But I'm just saying, Magneto let Toad enact a weird plan that needed a specific set of things to fall in order for it to even happen. But it did. The X-Men come a-running, 
and then the Brotherhood comes a razzing. So they're fighting with the X-Men. Uh, the Brotherhood ends up kidnapping Angel and the <laughs> leaving Toad for the X-Men to keep. Now, at first I thought it was going to be a little switcheroo or whatever, but no, the Brotherhood takes off with Angel and go up into space. Now... Trivia buffs, X-Men number 5, May 1964, the first time the X-Men go to space. And the first time we see Asteroid M. Asteroid M is one of Magneto's many layers that we will see throughout this series, but it is an entire asteroid that he's taken over and converted. This is the first time I started thinking, where is Magneto getting all the money for this stuff? Because later on he has cars and rockets and you know what, we'll get to it, but whatever his budget is it is awesome because he has all the cool toys <laughs> Iceman Beast Cyclops everyone but Angel goes up into space for the first time they're not really amazed about being in space even though like 24 hours ago they're at the mansion they're showing the grays the different uh, stuff in the mansion but yeah they're up in space Cyclops and Quicksilver this has been a thing that's been happening for the past few issues, is they seem to single out each other and start fighting each other while talking. Almost as if, you know, we're not really into this fight too much, but let's just hang out together and hopefully everything will blow over. Cyclops even thinks of inviting Quicksilver to join the X-Men. Since he doesn't know what's going on with Charles, because they just talked him in a broom closet at the beginning of the issue, he's kind of taking a more leadership role, which we all know he's good at and which he's been grooming himself for, and Charles has kind of been grooming him too. And he thinks, maybe I should invite this guy into the X-Men, because he doesn't seem to really believe 100% what uh, Magneto's spitting, but uh, he decides against it. Um, and they continue to fight and talk. He in one, At one point, Quicksilver's even amazed that Cyclops now has the power to not have to touch his visor when he uses his optic beam. It'd be cool if I could use a graphic to shoot an optic beam, cause I don't, but I don't know how to do that. Anyway, um... And he's like, wow, you're getting better at this. Almost like, you know, we hate each other, but if we see each other at the arcade, we're going to play some Pac-Man together. If, I don't even think they had video games back then, but whatever. Um, Iceman is helping Jean fight somebody, and he refers to her as her, my, hey, my pretty partner, which is uh, five out of five, five issues in a row. Somebody has to mention Jean's good looking while fighting in a life or death situation. Uh, the X-Men do get the win, and... Uh, Get Angel back. He Magneto tortured him a little bit, but you know he was okay in the long run. He'll live to fly and fight another day. But uh, the X Men do get off the asteroid, and when they get back to the mansion, who's there to greet him at the door? But Charles Xavier, Papa Chuck. He's like, I'm good. In fact, guys, I was faking being injured uh, just to keep you as a test, just to test you guys. Now, mind you, while this horrible test was going on. The X-Men didn't know if he was alive, dead, what was going on with him, but also Cyclops and Angel almost died in battle. Now, what kind of test is this? What kind of mentor is this? And if I'm one of the X-Men, and again, I'm not, but if I'm one of the X-Men and I know that Charles and Magneto have been communicating on the astral plane, which he told the X-Men last issue, I would think this whole thing, this whole track meet, Toad wins a race under a rubber mask. We go up to Asteroid M to see Magneto's cool lair. It was all one big ass test from Charles and Magneto. Like, they're in cahoots. Even though, like, Magneto would have taken a little bit too far. I'm like, yeah, two of your students died, Charles. But hey, everybody else, they did a B plus. Not an A, B plus. But, like, yeah. So Charles uh, tells him, I was doing a test in the X-Men... You know, being the 1960s smiling teenagers they are, they're like, ah, oh, Charles. End of issue. <laughs> My final thoughts were, this was actually a really good issue. Um, the battles were really good, and it amused me to no end to see the lengths that Charles would go to teach them a lesson, faking his injury, and sending kids who have not passed the final test of being X-Men uh, in his eyes to a life or death battle just to see what would happen. I mean, he and Magneto were kind of using the Brotherhood and the X-Men as like chess pieces for their little game of one-on-one, uh, -on -one, basically. But uh, yeah, 8 out of 10, good battle. Papa Chuck's a horrible mentor, but we live to read on another day. Next issue I'm really looking forward to because it does feature the first cameo from a non-mute 
uh, non-X-Men person of the Marvel Universe. So we're going to see a little cameo coming up. And I can't wait to talk about it. But this has been the fifth issue of Tommy Reads X-Men. And uh, thank you for checking it out. And if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe or just leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing, good or bad. Hopefully good. And uh, yeah, we'll check you out next issue.